Welcome back to Royals Weekly for this very special episode. My name is Marcus Mead. I am joined by a man whose employer chose to defer his contract until well after his death, my brother Mike. <laughs> yeah, but I'm making every cent back of it in nacho cheese and disappointed looks. <laughs> yeah, so. from students mostly. <laughs> Disappointment and nacho <laughs> cheese. <laughs> oh, those, are, those are the currency he lives by. But uh, yes, uh, you love them, them cafeteria lunches. That cafeteria nacho cheese, that'll hit every time, every single time. Mm -hmm. uh, any, anyway, uh, yes, thank you for joining us. We wanted to jump in and get a word in on Seth Lugo and Chris Stratton and Will Smith, who the Royals recently signed. It's a very exciting time in Royal Land. It was a hot day yesterday for the Royals making moves, and we want to talk about it because I have been waiting for these moves the entire offseason. Mike, let's kick it off talking about Seth Lugo, the big sign for the Royals. You know that I've wanted him for basically this entire offseason, in part because he's such a great fit here. On what, yesterday? Yesterday, it was announced that the Royals signed Seth Lugo right-handed pitcher. He was a free agent. He played for San Diego last year. In 2023, he had a 3.57 ERA in 146 and a third innings pitched. He had a 4.48 expected ERA. We'll talk a little bit about that. And a 3.83 fielding independent pitching, a great 6% walk rate and a 23.2% K rate. Mike, what are your thoughts on their ability to go out and sign Seth Lugo? They gave him a, a three-year deal for $45 million. What are your thoughts on that signing? Well, I think I think it's a good signing for the Royals. I think it's the type of player that they can actually get and that will sign a deal with a team like the Royals because he's looking for a place where he can prove he wants to where he can prove he can still be a starting pitcher. He's been a relief pitcher for most of his career in Major League Baseball. Had a great year last year. If he can continue that in front of a really good defense or what looks like it's going to be a really good defense, then I think there you know, this may be the last chance he gets to start, but he may then continue his career on after that three years um, in the bullpen somewhere. So uh, I think it's good for the Royals. I, the, I think the key here for Royals fans is to understand what your expectations should be when it comes to Seth Lugo. Don't expect an ace. It's not an ace kind of a thing. You're expecting a guy who is a good back end piece and kind of brings stability, if that makes sense. Now, the only concern here is he pitched more innings last year than he's ever pitched. And you wonder about the health as he's aging into his age 34 season. As long as he stays healthy, though, you feel like you're getting a guy who can be very consistent in your starting rotation. And that's really what this rotation lacked and has, has lacked for the last few years. And that's really what they're paying for here. They're paying to raise the floor of their starting rotation. They're not paying for an ace because they don't have the money for an ace and you can question how many aces are really available at this uh, free agent period. I guess there are maybe four or five. Some you can question if gone. they already have one. Right. Cole Reagans. He could already be an ace. And so the question is, what do the Royals actually need to make their team better? And it was, ever, it was never really actually front end of the rotation guys. They needed people to raise the floor of this pitching staff, especially the starting rotation. And that's what a guy like Seth Lugo can do. What's interesting to me about him is, he was always, in my mind, the best fit for the Royals, the most likely guy to come to the Royals because he's almost, this will be his age 34 season, and he has not had a big free agent contract yet in his career. This is his last chance to legitimately make money as a major league starting pitcher. He needs to secure a bag right now. So he's not caring as much about, oh, am I going to a team that's going to win? Am I, you know, that is probably his last consideration. Money is his first consideration. And there was a report out there that San Diego actually offered him a fourth year, although less guaranteed money. And so he took the Royals, right? Now that fourth year could have been player options or whatever. And he will have a player option for the final year of his deal with the Royals. So if he has two really good years, he could go out again and try and get another couple of years of even higher money or something like that. But more than likely, in my mind, he's going to do two years here. He's going to choose to take that player option because who wants to take a chance on a 37 year old? You know, I, that's, that's really hard to go out and get more than 15 million a year at that point, but should spend two or three years really raising the floor of this rotation because he doesn't walk a ton of people because he has that dominant curveball, and because he has a huge pitch mix. He throws at least six pitches. Fastball, forcing fastball, curveball, which is one of the best in Major League Baseball, sinker, slider, changeup, and he just started throwing a sweeper. There are some theories out there about how the Royals might be able to make Lugo even better than he has been in the past, and one of them is they make his slider better. One of the things the Royals have shown a propensity for doing is making sliders better. And if they can do that with Lugo, whose slider is a very high spin slider, it just hasn't been as effective as maybe it could be. 
they might find a way to help him implement that and maybe uh, get away from some of the pitches that are getting hit a little harder. He does have a concerningly high expected earned run average and a pretty high hard hit rate. But those are kind of counteracted a little bit by an exceedingly high ground ball rate. His ground ball rate right now is, or last year was 45.4%, which is good enough for the 66th percentile. That allows him to keep the ball in the yard, and that plus not walking people means he always limits the damage. His bad outings aren't that bad, and that's what the Royals really need. Instead of a, let's say, I don't know, I'll pick a name randomly out of a hat, Jordan Lyles type, who's going to give up three bombs, and then you know you're out of the game, you know? Yeah, and it was it, it's not just Lyles either. I mean, Brady Singer's had those starts over and over and over again. Brad Keller was having those starts over and over and over again. So if you really just looked at the guys that they've had in the last couple of years and said, can we get the opposite of that in free agency? That's what happened. And, and it fits a profile of a lot of the types of guys they're going at. We're going to talk about a couple of relievers who have similar profiles of, I don't walk guys and I'm pretty good at preventing home runs. That's sort of like... There are some people who are talking about like, well, what are the, is there a pattern to the types of pitchers they're looking at? Right now, that pattern is they don't walk very many guys and they don't allow that many home runs. That seems to be the pattern of guys they're looking for, which makes perfect sense when you play in a ballpark like Kaufman and you've built your team to have an exceptional defense, especially on the infield. And so it wouldn't surprise me if Lugo comes here and has, you know, a league average season around a four ERA. And, you know, just looks like a pretty solid mid to back end starter and keeps the Royals in a whole bunch of games, which is all you can really ask for, for his level of free agent, right? They're giving him $15 million a year. It's a little bit of an overpay. A lot of people expect him to be more around the $12 million range, but hey, the Royals had to pay the bad team tax. And that's kind of understandable. I find it encouraging that they were willing to pay the bad team tax and actually go out and get a guy who's going to be useful for them as a pitcher elongates the rotation. I'm pretty excited about this move. Mike, are you pumped for this move? I am pumped for this move. And my thought on the bad team taxes, if you don't want to pay it, start winning games. <laughs> yes. That is the most effective that's way what, to avoid that tax. That, that's what I put out on threads the other day. I'm like, you don't want to pay that tax, win some games. Then you don't have to pay the tax. Boom. Yeah. And, and that's the thing in order to turn the ship around, they were always going to have to go this route. They can't wait another eight years for their d- player development to get on, on top of it and start producing actual players who can be successful in major league baseball. If they want to turn it around quickly, they're going to have to do it through, through free agency and things like that. I'm glad they were willing to go out and spend the money. They also were willing to spend the money on some bullpen guys. Cause let's be honest, the bullpen may have been worse than the starting rotation last year. Let's talk a little bit about those bullpen guys, Mike. They went out and they got veteran reliever Will Smith. This was probably a little right after we recorded our last special episode, actually, or just a little bit after that. Will Smith is a, um, well, how old is Will Smith, Mike? I don't even know. 165, if I'm He's 165 mistaken. years old. Um, he's a left-handed <laughs> pitcher, uh, six foot five. Uh, used to be a Royal, was a Royals prospect. He had a, mm-hmm. had a 4.40 ERA last year, but only a 3.28 expected ERA, which is very good. Known for his slider. A big time slider, first pitcher, a guy who's got another low walk rate and a good, pretty good at home run prevention. Most people talk about the fact that he's been on the last three World Series winning teams, <laughs> and so he's going for four here with the Royals. Uh, but we'll see. Okay, so the the reason he's been on the last three World Series teams is because he's the kind of guy that gets traded at the deadline all the time. That middle of the pack reliever, lefty especially, so you can get other left-handers, who can get other left-handers out. Yeah, Will Smith, don't get too attached to Will Smith, okay? Because <laughs> there's a good chance he's probably getting dealt in the middle of the season at some point to likely, I don't know, the Rangers or the Braves or Yankees, something like that. But it's a good move in that capacity as well. Like, if you may get something back for Will Smith for, you know, whatever limited amount we spent on him. Um, but it also does exactly what this bullpen needs. It gives you a competent arm in the bullpen. The the thing that kind of intrigues me more than than a Will Smith is, are you what are they going to do as far as other guys to fill in those other roles? They're not going to have some sort of dominant closer type like they had in Araldis Chapman last year. Uh, probably they're probably not going to have that. And so, I'll be interested to see the other guys that they kind of bring in. Uh, the, the the Stratton deal is okay for me. It's kind of a meh thing i'm interested in the the dan um the guy that was in the dominican league uh yes i'm interested in what he can bring he's my kind of surprise bullpen piece coming in here i think he might end up being the surprise of of the season for us out of the bullpen so 
I, but it's going to have to take two or three more guys that you just kind of find off the scrap heap to fill out this bullpen. But I think Will Smith is a good move. Na, 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 na. Uh, yeah. And we're going to Miami. Uh, <laughs> had to do it. <laughs> what we're saying is don't start a long-term romantic relationship with Will Smith when he gets here. Okay. Because he's moving in like six months, probably. Okay. And so, <laughs> uh, yes, Will Smith no lie. Pro- might be a rental piece for us, but one year, 5 million is actually a very reasonable deal for a guy like Will Smith, for a guy, you know, if you're not contending, you can turn around and flip at the deadline almost certainly for a decent piece at the deadline. And that's what you got to be doing. You know, if you can flip him for a decent piece at the deadline, great. You know, I'm interested in the Chris Stratton deal. I think it's a very interesting deal. Uh, The same day yesterday that the Royals signed Seth Lugo, they announced that they also signed Chris Stratton, which who is a um, right-handed pitcher. I think he's 32, 33 years old, Uh, six foot two reliever. Mostly he has started one year in his career. And I want to talk about that here in a second, but he did throw 82 and a thirds innings out of the bullpen last year, which is quite a bit. So a multi-inning reliever in a lot of instances, a 3.92 ERA, a 3.53 FIP and a 3.66 expected ERA. So his defense might've hurt him a little bit last year. Um, but a guy with a good combination for four pitch mix, fastball, slider, curveball, changeup. Interestingly, he throws one of the most effective fastballs in baseball, even though it only goes 93 miles an hour. He throws it 55% of the time and opponents only hit 188 against it last year. So a really interesting fastball first guy, good. uh, I'm guessing there are really good pitch data on that fastball in terms of vertical approach angle and other things that sort of make it more effective than its velocity might indicate. Uh, I find Stratton interesting for a couple of reasons. One, again, raises the floor of this bullpen, right? We, We don't want to be counting on guys to just come out and like be great their first year in the major leagues or their first full year in the major leagues. I know I, ha- I know I have a lot of high hopes for McMillan and MacArthur and those guys, but we need some stability in this bullpen and Chris Stratton, Will Smith, those guys, Nick Anderson, those guys represent more stable figures in the bullpen. I find Stratton interesting for a wild hair reason, Mike, I don't want you to like entertain this. I don't want you to like placate me here, but you know what the Rays have been doing a lot lately? They've been finding bullpen no. guys who were effective in the bullpen and at one time were starters and they're turning them back into starters. Is it possible that okay. Stratton, who threw 82 and two thirds innings last year, could in some way be used to start games? It is a possibility. Well, I, however remote, it is very I, remote, but it is a possibility. I uh, I haven't made a tinfoil hat in quite a while, but I think, I think I still got some up there. Uh, I don't think Stratton's making starts, ladies and gentlemen. I don't think I so think either. I think he, guy. I think they. I think he fills the new. Um, oh my god, I've already forgotten his name. Who's the dude that threw multi innings for us for the last like five years? Scott Barlow, long hair. Thank you, Scott, Scott Barlow. Barlow. <laughs> I've already just he's already gone to me. Um, he, I think he fills the Scott Barlow role. I think he's going to start throwing a lot more. Now, I don't know if they'll put him in the high leverage situations they did with Barlow, but I think he ends up throwing a lot of one and a third innings and, you know, sometimes two innings and things like that at a time. Uh, I did not know that about his fastball, though. That is extremely interesting to me because, you know, Bovey comes out of the, or Bove comes out of the uh, the, the Cleveland organization and they, they're kind of known for those guys that have fastballs. Am I, am I thinking of the wrong guy? Sweeney Bovey comes, comes out of Cleveland. Or so. Bove comes Sweeney comes Minnesota. out. Thank you. Sweeney comes out of the, out of Cleveland's and Cleveland is known for those guys that maybe don't throw so hard, but have effective fastballs. So, and I, and I mean, how shocking will it be for us Royals fans to have a guy who throws an effective fastball out of the bullpen? When was the last guy? And to be clear, that fastball just got really effective. It was really effective this year, last year, but before that it was previously not that effective. And he actually increased velocity in his early thirties to get it to that level of effective. It was a little bit like lower in terms of velocity, but you know, last year he was throwing it around 93 and it was an amazing pitch for him. It was his by far his best pitch last year. And so we'll see if he continues to lean on that fastball, be a fastball dominant pitcher, or if they decide to go with a different pitch mix for him, because holding that velocity into your mid thirties can get difficult because sometimes the, just the fastball just doesn't work as well year to year. We'll see on that one. But another thing that Stratton has in common with all the rest of these guys is he doesn't walk a ton of guys, right? And that's going to be a common theme. I think we see about like, who are the most consistent and stable pitchers that you find? They don't walk guys and they prevent home runs to some degree. 
Stratton's been really good at preventing home runs throughout his career. Let's hope that that's a, a, a trait that sticks with him as he moves into Kauffman Stadium. These are three guys who I think lengthen your pitching staff significantly. Mike, what are your thoughts on, one, what they do for the pitching staff overall? And then I'll ask you another question after that. You mean like what other moves they're going to make? That's not the question. That'll be the next one. What, what, is the, what do these three moves do for their pitching staff overall? Oh, I, I completely agree with you. I think it it raises the floor. Uh, but I, I mean, it, it addresses the thing that we've been talking about for two or three years as their biggest problem with the pitching staff overall. And that's walks. I mean, how many different times have they tried to address it? We remember sort of at the end of the Cal Eldred era, it was first pitch strikes. We're going to monitor how much they throw first pitch strikes and see what they can do. And that was like, didn't work. Nothing improved. It actually got worse. Um, and then, you know, last year it may have improved slightly, but it was still the, one of their biggest problems was that they walk too many guys. The bullpen especially showed it last year. So yeah, I, I think that's what they're trying to address. They're seeing an, a need, a concern, and specifically addressing it with the types of acquisitions that they're making in this offseason. Yeah, and I think what can't be understated is the value of pushing guys like Alec Marsh, Angel Zerpa, Daniel Lynch maybe even, into different roles, either AAA or maybe some of those guys will move into the bullpen or something like that, that they can have a better chance to succeed. They can have a better chance to develop in. I would love to see March get a look in the bullpen. I would love to see Daniel Lynch get a look in the bullpen. I would love it if those guys got pushed to AAA and just sort of got to develop a little bit while they were, you know, instead of us needing them. Like the ideal outlook for, for Alec Marsh last year wouldn't have been that he went from double A to the majors. He would have stayed in double A AA or AAA for the entire year if, if we were doing what was best for his development. Same with Angel Zerpa. He's made a lot of starts at Major League Baseball. He should have never been in Major League Baseball. Like all these guys need the time to develop. Signing Seth Lugo, signing these bullpen guys, hopefully signing one more starting pitcher gets them to lengthen their pitching staff and pushes some of the guys who should be in AAA or should be in the bullpen out of the starting rotation and into the roles that they will be better suited for or that they are are a better position for them along their progression. So Mike, we've talked a little bit about it. I do want to I do want to pause real quick. Oh, you have a point to make on that? Go for it. I do. I just want to say one more thing. If you're looking at another bit of evidence as to this is kind of the approach when they're building their pitching staff, who is the pitcher that they got rid of that we all kind of thought that they would hang on to? Dylan Coleman, the guy who is notorious for not throwing strikes. So if if we can see anything, it's that there's evidence on the guys we're getting and the guys we're letting we're letting leave or giving away. It's that we're looking to acquire guys that don't walk people. And that's directly a, a desire to halt the volatility of our pitching staff. We don't want guys who are going to dominate one day and give up 16 runs the next. That's just not really what they're looking for. They would rather have a guy like Lugo, who is more likely to give up four runs every day than a guy who's going to give up zero one day and nine the next, right? I think that makes a lot of sense. But anyway, before we move on, I want to say give a quick shout out to our sponsors on the show. They do so much to support us. We are so, so grateful for them. They are Eric Oksher of West USA Realty. You can contact him for any housing in the Phoenix area you might need at 480-383-9745. Shoot him a text. Give him a call. 480-383-9745. We're also sponsored by Knapp Family Wealth. If you need any sort of help with wealth management, look them up at knappfamilywealth.com. That's K-N-A-P-P familywealth.com. Also, we are sponsored by All In Physical Therapy. If you have any sort of physical therapy needs, you want great one-on-one -on -one physical therapy, look them up at allin-pt.com. That's A-L-L-I-N-PT.com. All right, Mike, we're going to end with one big question here. What do the Royals do for the rest of this offseason? Are there any moves left? What do they need to do to wrap up uh, the turnaround of this team? Well, I, th I think the big one that we're all looking for is who's going to fill that last rotation spot. I would, my preference is that they trade somebody for, for somebody who is somewhat controllable. Over Now, here's my preference. If they trade, like let's say an MJ Melendez for their last rotation spot, I am okay if they don't get the quality of guy, if the guy is more controllable, if that makes sense. Because you always have to keep in the back of your mind, we're getting Kyle Wright after this year too, okay? We're getting uh, Bubich back at the end of this year, okay? So we do have some pieces coming back to us, but I want a guy that's a little bit controllable to move into that spot as well. So I would 
try to trade an MJ Melendez, an Edward Olivares, a combination of those two, a Michael Massey, a, a Michael Garcia for a controllable starting pitcher, either one who's in AAA and is busting on the door of MLB or one who has a little bit of limited MLB experience to put into this rotation and let grow from there. I'm not asking for somebody who's a potential future one or two. I'm looking for a guy who looks like he can stick in the league for a long time as a three, four or five. Right. Essentially you're looking for the type of prospect who will be a Seth Lugo. Essentially you're looking for, or, or something like that or something even a little bit worse than that would be fine. Right? Like somebody who's just going to limit walks, limit home runs, and then take care of business. Uh, oddly, you want Enhel Zerpa to be that kind of guy. You want him to be a guy who can get ground balls, will keep the ball in the yard, will strike out enough guys to get by, won't ever be dominant, won't ever be a one or two, but won't ever be a guy who's give, you know cruising with a six and a half ERA either, right? Like that's the type of guy they're looking for in terms of a starter if they're going to trade for one. I'm okay with the trade for one approach. Uh, my ideal, I think, would probably be trading someone like Melendez or Olivares, probably Olivares, because uh, he has fewer years of control than Melendez does, I think. Um, and, you know, I think there's a little bit more potential for Melendez as a fielder than there is for Olivares. Uh, Melendez really hasn't been fielding in the outfield very often very, for a very long time. I think there's just more room for growth there. But I think in my ideal world, they just go ahead and keep spending. <laughs> Honestly, like I know that they came out and said that they had $30 million to spend this off season, but they also said that they would be willing to go over that for the right player. I think it makes a little bit more sense to go out and spend a little bit more than to expend your own player resources from, from a lineup that isn't that deep anyway. Like, you know, I, I don't know that they can afford to get rid of guys like Melendez and Olivares and stuff like that. They need hitters too. They need a lineup. And so if they could go out and get a guy like, my dream right now is Sean Manaya. If they could go out and get Sean Manaya, I'd be very happy with that move. If they can't afford that, I'd be happy with Martin Perez, who I think is going to go in the 10 million AAV range. I think his market's going to be real dry because frankly, he stopped striking guys out. Inconsistency. In yeah. Well, not inconsistency. <laughs> like he, he, he just, his, his ERA was like 4.45 last year. Not bad, right? Like still has a high ground ball rate, right? That sort of thing. Gave up a few more home runs last year than he normally does, but, you know, it's in there. His his ability to sort of limit damage is in there, but his strikeout number went down from like seven and a half to five and a half, and that's going to scare a lot of people. That's strikeouts per nine. And so I'd be in on Martin Perez as a bounce back candidate. There are other guys I might be in on, like Frankie Montas and stuff like that. Uh, even uh, Spencer Turnbull as, as a reclamation project, as a bounce back candidate. You know, I, I like think him. There, I think yeah. there are guys out there in free agency they can get for less than a huge amount of money. And, you know, you can sell them on more. You can sell the reclamation projects more on come pitching Kaufman, come pitch behind our great defense or in front of our great defense. And you'll, you'll do fine. You know, like, I think that, I think that's a, an approach that I would prefer if they have to trade for guys fine, but I, I would love it if they'd be willing to just go out and spend a little bit more money to turn around this starting rotation. I think ultimately it would be really worth it in, in the long run. The other thing that I'm really looking for, uh, and this will be this will happen closer, probably into January and things like that. Or so who are those veteran bullpen arms that are being signed to minor league contracts that are um, and getting getting spring training invites? Uh, I, I want to see that list of guys so that we can kind of figure out who's getting the last two or three bullpen spots because there's always one of those guys that ends up popping out and and becoming a, a, a guy that you can at least trade at the deadline or becoming kind of like a force for you in the bullpen. So. That's the other the other big thing I'm looking for outside of that last rotation spot. Yeah, you mentioned Anta Vila. They they signed a guy. I think his name is Travis Duffy. Is another one of those minor league relievers that they signed already. But you're right. I think there probably are at least one or two more of those guys out there who they'll sign and give an invite to spring training to see. Hey, can we stash you in AAA for a while and you can be the depth for our bullpen along with guys like, you know. Uh, Marsh maybe or Veneziano or Bolin or those guys who will be starters probably ostensibly in AAA, but could easily be called up and put into a major league bullpen at some point. So yeah, it's very exciting. One more move and one more starter acquired and the Royals have actually given me my wish list for this off season. Who would have thunk it, you know? Uh, anyway, that's all we have for this time. Thank you so much for joining us. We will be back. I think in early January at the very least with an episode until then be good to each other and go Royals. <laughs>